Hello and welcome. In today's video, we're going to be setting up SyncThing. We're going to install it on both our server and on our phone. And I really love SyncThing because it gives us an easy way to keep the important files on our phone backed up to our server. And we can replace things like Google Backup and iCloud. We can manage our own backups for our phone ourselves. We don't need to rely on a third party. We can make sure our pictures, our videos, our recordings, our memes that we download, our contacts, our app settings, everything is backed up ourselves without relying on a third party service. Before we get started, I just wanted to quickly mention if you found this video through search or through the browse features on YouTube, I have a whole series on getting a good solid self-hosting environment set up. And that includes a proper backup system, a monitoring system, and a notification system. Check out some of my other videos if you're interested in that. But with that out of the way, let's dive in. Here we have the SyncThing documentation. You can see it runs on pretty much any type of platform. So this isn't just used for backing up a phone to your server, although that is the sole reason that I use it. You can use this across multiple different devices, machines, and operating systems. You can see it supports Android, Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. Today on the server, as with most of the services we spin up here, we're going to be using Docker. So let's scroll down. And here we have Docker. We'll click on this link. And if we scroll down again, we have two ways to spin this up. We can either use Docker Compose or Docker Run. In this case, we're going to use the Docker Compose. So let's copy this right here and then SSH into the server. If you follow along with my other videos, you know we have a directory set up just for storing Docker container settings and data. And we're going to go into that directory right now. First, let me show you the shared directory. And here we have all these sim links to different places on our data drive just to make it easier to navigate to them. So that's why we're going to shared, Docker. And in here you can see some of the other folders we have for different containers that we're already running. We're gonna create a new one for sync thing. And then we're gonna create the compose file. Paste in what we copied from the documentation. And you can see we have this image image name or container name host name that i don't use if you use host names to connect between different containers you can i usually just use ip address and port because i'm old school this i need to change for my environment and then you can set your time zone and this from the documentation is set we have our config folder inside the container which is going to have all the settings that we may be changing within sync thing. Where do we want to save those on the server? Well, we're going to save those in the same directory as the compose file in a config folder there. Now the next items we need to give it, basically we need to expose the file system on the server to the container. And we already have a location set up on the server for that. Let's take a look at it. Going back to our shared folder, if we take a look at some of the data locations we have already set up, we have this backups location. And this backups location is meant specifically for us to send backups from other devices to the server. So if we go in there, we have a folder set up for each user that's going to be using it. And then if we go into our user, we have further folders for each device that we may want to back up here. You can see I have a desktop, laptop, and phone folder. Personally, on my desktop and laptops, I don't run sync thing. I find it easier just to use rsync. That way, if I want to keep my bash rc file or my Firefox profile or any other files or settings backed up to the server, I'll just create a simple little script with rsync, maybe run it as a cron job and keep it backed up that way. The way I actually do it is my laptop in my living room is my main machine and that uploads to the server with rsync and then the desktop and the laptop out in my garage will pull those files down so they all stay synced that way using rsync. Now rsync doesn't work too good on a phone which is the whole reason why we're going to be setting up sync thing just for that sole purpose and we have that phone directory here let's go into it. Right now it's empty but we're going to want to back up different folders on our phone to this location and you need to know where your data lives on your phone in order to back it up. So I would recommend getting a good file manager. The one that I use is Material Files. And you can see here on my phone, 
This is your standard Android directory structure. You can see there's a movies folder, music, DCIM. That one's important. That's where your camera stores its pictures. You have a downloads folder, documents. I have Tasker installed, so I have a Tasker folder, pictures, a backups folder that I created. And in that backups folder, that's where I export app settings to that location. You have alarms, recordings, ringtones, notifications, audiobooks, podcasts, and your Android folder. So you need to know what folders you're going to want to back up here. And then you're going to want to create a directory in this folder for each one of those folders that you want to back up. So we'll do a make directory. Let's say like we'll make a movies, music, camera folder, documents, pictures, tasker, and that should be good enough to use as an example. So let's jump back to our compose file. And then we have these two placeholders that the documentation gave us in the config. And on this left side, we're exposing the file system on the server. And we're going to be mounting it in this location inside of the container. So we know that we want to expose this location, shared backups, Tony phone. And we can mount this anywhere inside the Docker container. We could put this in mount. Tony phone. We could we could put this literally anywhere in there, but we wouldn't have to remember to reference it. Generally, in this case, it's just easier to remember if we give it the same exact location as it is living on the actual server's file system. It doesn't have to be though. So I want you to be aware of that. You can take this, expose it, and mount it inside the container anywhere you want. And if you have multiple users or multiple different locations you want to do this with, you can keep adding more and more and more and more down here. But we're just going to use this one. And then we have the port. And then I always like to just do network mode, bridge, and we can control S, control Q, and sudo docker compose up dash D. Now this started the container. And if we type in the IP address of the server, and the port, it was 8384, here we go. The first thing you get is this pop-up asking if you wanna allow reporting. I'm gonna say no, that's personal preference. And then the second thing you have is this warning that's saying that you should set a user and password for it. So we'll do that. We'll hit save, and we need to log in with that user. So this is sync thing running on the server. However, it's not really going to do anything until we connect another device and start sharing files with it. Now on the phone, we're going to open up sync thing. You can see when you open sync thing up for the first time, you have to grant it some permissions. So go ahead and do that. You also should turn off battery optimization as well. I'm not going to do that. And you can see by default, it sets your camera folder to sync. I'm going to delete this, so I'm not going to be doing that in this example. First thing that I actually want to show you is under settings and run conditions. This is where sync thing is kind of nice because you can set it to run on Wi-Fi and run on power. And that's how I set sync thing up. So it's not constantly running all the time. I set it to AC power, and that way SyncThing only runs at night when I plug it into my charger right before I go to bed. As soon as I plug it in, it starts syncing all the data for that day to the server. Now, of course, you can have it continually run all the time, and anytime you make a change to your files, your folders, it'll automatically sync it right away as soon as it sees those changes. That's a personal preference. That's up to you. When you have it running all the time, though, it does use more battery. Now we need to add the server to the app. And on the server, the easiest way to do that is gonna be if you go up here into actions and click on show ID, it's going to generate a QR code. And now on your phone, you can go over to devices, click the plus symbol and click the little QR icon and then just scan that code on your phone. Now, if your camera doesn't work, you can just copy this long string here and then paste it into your phone or type it in. It would be a lot of typing, but you can do that manually. And we'll name it OMV. 
and then we'll set the introducer and then save it. It'll take some time for these things to communicate across the network, but we should get a pop-up on the server here pretty soon that's saying this phone is trying to connect with it. Here we go, it's saying device pixel 5a wants to connect, so we're gonna add it. And you can change the name if you want to, but we're just gonna leave it. And now these devices are connected with each other and we can start sharing folders with it. Now to share a folder, you just click on folders and then the plus symbol in the top. Let's choose a directory first. And here you're given a little file manager where we can select what directory we want to sync. I'm gonna pick this music folder Click on use this folder, allow, and then we'll name it music. And then we have to hit this toggle so that we send it to the OMV device. Now the other thing to mention here is we have folder type. And depending on how you want to sync these files, you can choose a different option. Send and receive means if it changes on the phone, it's going to send it to the server. And alternatively, if you change it on the server, it's also going to sync that change to your phone. You might not want that. You might want to do a send only so that your phone has the master data. And if something changes on the server, it's not going to be synced. It's only going to sync if it changes from the phone. So we'll do send and receive on this one. Hit finish. Save that. And you can see as soon as we save it, we get a pop-up. Pixel 5 wants to share folder music. So we'll click on add. And then we have to give it the path that we want to save it to on the server. And this is going to be referencing this side of this bind mount. So whatever you set on this side, this is what you want to type in here. And then it will end up going in this location on your server. I just want to be clear with how these volume bind mounts work. In this case, we set them to be the same on both sides, so it really doesn't matter. We'll type this in. And we'll hit save, and it's, it's synced. Now, if you have like a huge folder with tons of stuff in it, it's gonna take a while for everything to sync up. This folder for me just has a few files in it, very small, so it's synced almost instantly. Let's take a look at that folder now on the server. And you can see all those files now are on the server. And when Borg comes across to make actual legitimate backups on these directories, that information is going to get backed up. And then you just want to do this with the rest of your folders. You can see this folder has a little more data in it, so it's taking a little longer. Then you would do this for all of your other important folders, like your camera folder, that DCIM folder. You'd want to back up all your pictures. Any other folders that you have important data in, you need to figure out where your data lives and what's important to you to make sure that you're backing everything up in case you lose anything, you can restore it the way it was. Now, apps and settings get a little more tricky if you don't have a rooted phone. If you have a rooted phone, it's very easy to make full backups of all your apps and settings with Neo Backup. And I just store those in my backups folder on the phone, and then I have sync things, sync that over to the server. Now, if you don't have a rooted phone, there's not as many options for you. And unfortunately, I'm not familiar with non-rooted backup applications. You'd have to take a look into that for yourself. A lot of apps now, like Podcast Addict for one, has ways to export their settings. And in those cases, I will set Podcast Addict to export or back up the settings to the backup folder on my phone, which again gets synced to the server via sync thing. So hopefully most of your apps have built-in setting export feature. If not, and you have a rooted phone, you can use Neo Backup. And as far as your contacts are concerned, in a later video, I'm going to be showing how to set up BiCal, which will allow us to manage our own calendar and our own contact list without, again, having to rely on a third party like Google or Apple. But that's basically it for SyncThing. It's a really great application for backing up everything on your phone 
Also really like the run conditions and can set it so it only turns on when I plug it into my phone charger at night, syncs everything that changed throughout the day to the server. And then when the server runs its nightly backups with Borg, then I know that it's actually making a proper backup snapshot of that data. The other nice thing with having the files on your phone synced to your server is you now have access to them with like your Samba shares. Let me show you that. I'll open up my file manager and I'll show you the actual files that I have synced on the server that I'm using. So if I go to backups, this is how I organize things for myself personally. Kind of how I'm showing you here. Here's phone. And then if I go into the camera folder, you can see I have access to all the pictures on my phone right from any computer that I have set up these Samba shares on to the server. If you have any questions or input, leave a comment down below. Otherwise, you can also hit me up on Telegram. Thank you for watching, and you have a nice day.